So welcome to another war game review from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a game that came out very much at the beginning of 2021. And this is Battle of the Bulge 1944. Or as the box says, 1944. 1944. Battle, Battle of the, of the Bulge. Bulge. Uh, this is from Worthington. Um, they are a publisher of mid and light tier war games. I would say I would so, say. yeah. And they do a good job. Yeah. Their, their Al boards are great. Always have good production value. Yep. Always, and of all the publishers, if it says two hours on the box, it's a two hour game. Yeah. And that's something I appreciate. Uh, so this is a big, it's a bulge game. There's a trillion bulge games out there. This is a... We've played several of them. Yeah, this is a single mapper. And it's also, so it's at a scale where the, the counter density is pretty low. Mm -hmm. uh, and as such, it plays in two hours, like it says on the back of the box. And I've talked to a lot of people who have played this. And they fully agreed that it does what it's supposed to. Yeah. Uh, so, well, I think if you take out our discussion points, because we, we did stop quite often and yeah, we're talking we, we're about talking stuff. strategic considerations. I think two hours for this scenario was absolutely spot on. Yeah. That's what it would have been. Very reasonable. Um, so, yes, it, this is a, you know, I want to say a light bulge game, but it kind of is. But it is. The, the actual rules that you play with are four and a half, five pages, mm -hmm. which is impressive. Yeah, um, it you know it, it cuts out a lot of crunch and some detail and bits and pieces, but you still have you've got your units they're divided into different formations that you can activate and use your like artillery can only be used for certain. Mm -hmm. You've got zones of control. There's bridge interdiction if you're kind of on one side of a bridge, um, and there's some very simple supply rules as well. Yeah, so you got all the hallmarks of a bulge game. But it's it's very much pared down. Plays in two hours because the map's fairly small, and because it's not even the whole it's not even the whole board, right? Yeah. There's there's lots of tracks and tables on the outside of this, mm -hmm. and the low counter density means it's probably very appealing to lots of people who would be scared off by some of the large games out there as well. No, I mean, I, to me, this game, what it's intended to do is to play one of the major battles of World War II mm -hmm. with fairly simple rules overhead. Low counter density, and and there wasn't a lot of arguing about rules. Meaning we weren't discussing what does that actually mean. We we yeah, felt like it was fairly clear. clear yeah. Um. So yeah, it, it's intended. I think I'm not going to say it's an introductory, but it's 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 on the lower complexity end of war games. You could yeah. play this with anybody, whether they are a long time war gamer or a new war gamer. Yeah, it's the kind of thing that you can crack out and play with your dad. Yeah, right. Yeah, because it's not a massive time commitment. The rules are once again four pages, which yeah. is shorter than most games of any kind out by there. by far. And uh, and it's a topic which is one of the most popular topics out there as well. Yeah. Why do people play bulge games? Yeah, I mean, we 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 talked about that. I think it came down to you very astutely said <laughs> big tanks, lots of tanks. Yeah. And and there is actually some maneuver in these types, which I always find in war games to be fascinating. Yeah, maneuver is part of the interesting parts of it. Yeah. How do I get to where I need to be? Also, how do I manipulate the map to create, in essence, uh, tension or pressure on you yeah, or if to I'm, do something you don't want to do? Or if I'm do. trying to create pockets to encircle yeah. you, or how do I get advantage here and there without flanking? Those things are interesting. Yeah, there's not many... Especially on the uh, on the Western Front, there's not a lot of really late mm -hmm. war engagements. This was really the last massive one. Yeah. And it was the last offensive the Germans ever did. So a lot of the other engagements are really small scale, where mm -hmm. it's pockets of defenders as they're rolling down Berlin Highway, basically. So this is kind of the last big battle, like massive battle on the West Front, which is, I yeah. think, why it's it's interesting, because you get all the, the big, big cats... You get all thirty mm -hmm. core comes in at the end. It's a lot. You get a lot of the interesting. It's the last. This is the last big engagement on the West Front, really. Yeah. Um, and it was, you know, it was effectively decisive defeat for the Germans, and that was the end of them as a it, it was unified fight. It was the force. beginning of the end because they had, as in essence, thrown everything at it. And yeah. it didn't work. They couldn't get get what they needed, and it's like, okay, now we just have to fall back. Yeah. After that, it was just a, a you know, it was, it was only a matter of time at that point, yeah. basically. And then I think the other interesting thing, and I think that's why there's a lot of East Front games as well, because Barbarossa was in end effect a failure as well. Mm -hmm. So was this. It's that's that's the interesting part of war games is 
can I actually execute this thing that was a failure better than that was done? Yeah. And that's that's an interesting intellectual exercise to walk yeah. through. That's the part of simulation that everybody likes. Can I do it better? Can I get further? Can I do yeah. it earlier? Right. No, knowing what I know, because I've yeah. got the 2020 vision of what happened, can I do better? And then you yeah. get into the game design aspect of it is... How have they modeled it to restrict you to a historical outcome? Or have they yeah. done it? Or have they just given you a sandbox where it is possible? Well, and, and Dan Forney, I think, did an excellent job of, of that part of it, really. The, the concept of my movement points, the effective terrain, zones of control on that, and where I can get. Because it was kind of funny. We sat here and we're like, okay, you can basically get here at this part of the game. Yeah. And then it's like, ooh. Grant, Grant did okay. He got to this point during the, the third round or fourth round. And it's like, okay, I'm pretty close to my objectives. But then it all fell apart. Right. You the, got a the couple. Reinforcements start yep. coming in. Start cutting so, supply. Taking but it, key points. it was so interesting because I was like, oh, I just got a couple moves from really being at a good position. Well, that was designed, right? Yes. The road was placed there. The terrain was placed there to do that. I think Dan did a great job of incorporating the terrain in in limiting what the Germans can can ultimately yeah, get like to at certain you, points. You had one armor unit that was one turn away from being able to but win you the game. Literally one turn had you simply made a mistake and gone somewhere else, but you weren't going to make that mistake. No, it was... but it's like, it's still on a thread. If if, if some combat goes poorly, yeah. you, it, it, and that's what you want in a game, right? You want some yeah, tension. yeah, th there's some, it could happen, will it happen, maybe not. But it really could. Yes. So I, I think the map was well done. I think the terrain was well done. The movement concepts were well done. Even the initial setup along that Siegfried line really created some very interesting, I thought, choices for me. Yeah. Where do I attack? What units do I move up? We all want to break out our armor. <laughs> we all we, we all want to run that armor down the roads. You chuck the dice. Y you know, but the, the dice are... Very interesting in this design. Yeah, the the combat resolution. Again, this is not a, a, the most complex war game. There's yeah. no CRTs or anything. Uh, each unit has a combat value, and that's the number of dice that it rolls. And there are these custom dice, and four sides are blank. One side has an infantry symbol, and one side has an armor symbol. Yep. So if you're trying to attack an infantry unit, you have to roll an infantry symbol. Well, uh, an, an artillery will hit... An inf or I'm sorry. I think armor can be put an onto armor an armor can be put onto an infantry. But so not you've vice got versa. right. So you've got two out of six when attacking to hit an infantry. You've only got one out of six. Yeah. When attacking an armor, so it's akin to having to roll a six on three or four dice. Yeah, which is y you know it it happens quite a bit, but it didn't happen enough for the Germans to be able to it's continue. Yeah, to it's hard to get because a lot of the units especially past the starting ones, have three or four steps. So for it to be decisive and for you to eliminate units, you have to roll incredibly well. Or you have to commit yeah. so many units to it that those units are then not doing something else. Yeah. Like going out and holding key supply yep. routes or trying to exit off the map for victory points. Well, and I think because of the limitations of the dice system, which which I think is actually fine, the dice system I thought was very cool. <laughs> it was fun. I, I thought it was interesting. We saw a lot of times where we both rolled nothing. It's very easy to roll all blanks. Yeah, we so... A lot. But I, I think the only comment we had a lot of discussion of, most of your good infantry unit were four steps. Yes. So that literally means, in order to eliminate that, you've got to be rolling, let's just say, seven or eight dice... Most likely, yeah. So if, odds you got to roll six dice to to do two steps, right? It is yeah, that would be the minimum. But I think more like seven to eight yeah. to do two steps worth of, and then you're still looking at a whole another round of combat. After yeah, and that. and that's that's the challenge. Yeah. I, I think at several points I could circle this area, this area, and this area, and say this is going to take me three to four rounds to get through. Which is okay. That's kind of what the, it was a slog. Yeah, they were dug in, uh, you know, etc. The the Americans were dug dug in, dug in, and the and the American or the Germans were attacking. But it's like you you just can't blow a stack away. It's oh, yeah, in it's, one it's, turn. It's unlikely that you'll do. That. Very unlikely. And frankly, if it happens, that's one of those exultant moments. Yeah, everyone stands up and is like, and Whoa, like, Whoa, how did you roll six hits? And and that's fine. I think that creates that exuberance and some interest, but 
I think overall, if you simulate that over and over and over and over again, I think a lot of times the Germans are not going to get where they need to because of the number of steps. Yes. The de defending in this one, if you're defending in a town, you get plus one a dice as an attacker. In a city, plus two dice as an attacker. Rough. And then, and then the attacker's negative dice attacking yep. into a lot of those things as yep. well. So the, the <clears> dice will often... I might have one unit, and you might have, like, three... And the yeah. dice will pretty much come to a fairly mm -hmm. even level. So let's just use an example here. And there is no town here. But you've got... Uh, i got four dice and I'm in the rough. Yeah, you're, you're a, an armored unit in the rough with four dice. You have no limitations to defending there. No. But I'm attacking with what should be ten dice worth of armor. But because I'm attacking into a rough area, I'm negative two dice per unit. Per armor unit, yes. Per armor unit. So, all of a sudden, this two... Yeah, the two... The two, two strength, he he doesn't got, do anything. Got nothing. He was there only to absorb losses. That's what the concept and was. And then you've got two four units. Those that are, are rolling two apiece. So, four dice. So, you've got four and I've got four. You've got three armor units and I've got one. Yeah. So, that, that things get... It's interesting. So, how, how and where you pick and choose to defend is also yep. very important in this. Yep. Usually, it's quite obvious because... Well, You're looking at towns on crossroads yep, for, that's the big to point. keep your supply intact and to help cut enemy supply. Yep. But trying to defend in rough terrain where you can, where you can dig yeah. in and get those big bonuses. They have to dig you out. The yeah. time constraints in this one mean that that's very difficult. Yeah, it, it, it's a timer. You've got. To, that's why we're saying you got to get to this point. You got to get to this point. By turn four, I really had to be here. Yeah. And if I wasn't, I was here, but I had not captured enough really to yeah. to realistically challenge you. The other concept we talked a lot about is the infantry, not as mobile. You know, they don't have as no. much movement. But when they roll their dice into rough, they don't take as big a penalty. Yes. So a three, a four dice infantry units going to roll three dice it's, into yes. a into a city or a rough area. So I what I needed was a couple. Units of infantry to but, supplement. But they move much slower. They move so, terribly so slow. It's the whole bringing yep. them up to support. The tanks are basically always yep. going to outrun them at some point in the game. Well, and, and there's a lot of roads, up. but roads only affect mechanized units for the German. Yeah. The, the infantry don't gain a benefit from being on the roads. No. They don't gain the half movement. No, yeah. Allied infantry do if, because of trucks. If they don't go into any enemy zones of control right. or anything like that. So that's a that's a that's a balancing effect to try to keep it, but you got to I think what I did wrong and what I will do in our next play or future plays is I'll take a couple units of infantry and probably start you try and run them early. Kind of push them even though I really need their strength to defeat this line initially. You got to do that. You got to get out there. Um so those are some interesting, I think, considerations that Dan did a good job of putting into the game. I like the dice. There are a lot of variants. We didn't necessarily play them. Yeah, so there's a number of... There's a number of... Because playing the same game over and over again, sure. It's going to be fine. But they give you a couple of different other variants. Yeah. So there's the there's the normal 10-turn campaign where you got to get all these... Capture basically everything on the map. If, it's like every major city. Like yeah. 14 victory points and it's... We counted them up, and I was like, "It's everything, Dang. and it's on like the west edge of that." So yeah. you basically capture everything. Yeah. There's a there's a shorter seven turn scenario which yep. we played. Hitler's where autumn mist. You have to get in supply armor unit to exit the board, basically on the west or the uh, northwest map edge. If you can do that, you win the game instantly. And I was I was one turn away from yep, doing very that. Close. But then there's there's some other shorter ones where it's you got to capture basically the mid board. but you have only six turns to do it. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, and then there was another one. There's uh, another short one where it's you've got to capture a number of little bits and pieces as well. Yeah. But on top of that, there's also some rules variants where you, yeah. that you can do weather. variable weather, German yeah. variable supply, and bits yeah. and pieces like that. So there's some neat you know, bits that you can play around with to make the place different if you're yeah. so inclined to do so. Well, I, I think the thing that I like the most about these four different variants is it's really four different games. Yeah, they are quite different. Be because you have such vastly different victory conditions. So this game, I mean, you could literally play this variant three or four times to try to figure out how am I going to get this done? That's the one we played. And then you could whip these out and it's it's really it, a totally different it, experience. It changes because your goals change. Yeah. What you do tactically will be different. Yeah. 
So I like that they, I think they took a fairly simple game, they added these things, and they did this with 1940... Dunkirk? Dunkirk. Yeah. That was one of the first Worthington games that I think we played. Yes. It was like five years ago. That's a long time ago. Right? Doug Bryant made yes. that game. They did the same thing. And I remember we thought, ooh, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, they gave you some optional ahistorical yeah. goals to do. Capture these three cities. And Don't worry about making it to the to, to, to Fundamentally to the, changes to the beach. what you're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. So, once again, I think they took a fairly simple, fairly straightforward rule system, plugged in some variants that add some variability, yeah. and create really a totally different game that I think could be played more and more uh, than traditionally because you just had one set of conditions and you're going to be slugging and it out a, over and over again. For a small again. game, that works because you're going to want to play this multiple times. Yeah. Right? If yeah. it's a big, giant, you know, three or four mappers, you, uh, you just need the yeah. one set of a, a goals, time, right? A time for trumpets, which is the big game, bulge game from GMT that just came out six months ago. I mean, that's like five maps, 3,000 counters. Yeah, you don't need the variants for no, that, right? No, we're, we're just... Can, it's yeah. going to take you three months to play just the one We're going to slug it out. We're working on trying <laughs> to get that one where we can play one of the smaller scenarios because, uh, frankly, we can't do a five map. I, don't have space. I, I wish we could. I'd have to put it on the floor. And Maybe we could go to Consum World. And, but back to this game, I, I think this game does what it set out to do, okay. and I think it does it fairly well. Yes. And I, it, it, it's interesting. I had a good time playing. Yeah, it. that's it. We sat down for two hours. We played a bulge game. We chucked yeah. some dice. We moved some counters, and I had fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's some what I'm looking for. very interesting dice. Yeah, we were cur look at that. I just rolled three hits. What the heck? Where was that drawn again? Yeah, exactly. And uh, and again, so the uh, once again, I will consistently come back to this. So the rules, I guess, the actual rules that you're playing with, is six six pages of rules. Six, six and a half pages of rules. I mean, that's not that's not that's complex. That's really good. You can play this with anyone. Yeah. You could honestly play this with anyone. The other thing that Worthington really does is they put two sets of the rule books in. That's always so I good. I just wish I wish every company would. Yeah. Because you know we could each have one. We could look up a concept. I I just what's, think that's what's the, funny is is Worthington games are usually so easy to learn. You don't need to. Yeah, you don't rules. necessarily need two sets of rules. Every other company needs yeah, to put do. two in the rules because yeah. we both need them because they're much more complicated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll show you the map and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at the map. Um, so you can see it's a bulge game. So you have the Siegfried line over here in the east. This is where all the German units start lined up against all the allied units and the Germans are trying to push this way across the board. Um, there's, again, a number of different scenarios. The one that we played was the uh, the uh, Hitler's Autumn Mist, where all the Germans have to do is run one armor unit in supply out of one of these four areas. And if they do that, they instantly win the game. So they're just trying to charge uh, a lot of stuff up here whilst keeping themselves in supply. As such, they start with a lot of these, a lot of what are called RPs. These are resource points. And there's a track here for the Allied ones, and the German ones are up here. The Germans start each turn with like 20 to start the game with, and the Allies start with like 6 and 8, not very many. So they're playing a much more defensively, but of a reactive game. But it's on the Germans to try to break through and, and kind of go north-northwest. So, RPs are spent for everything in this game. Everything is done with this uh, RP economy. Um, the resource points, you spend one to move one unit, its movement value. You spend one to attack a hex, and you, it's, so this is the hex, I spend one to attack this hex, then every unit adjacent to it can attack in it. All costs one, it's one per attack you do. Not per unit attacking. Uh, but then also at the beginning of your turn, the RPs are spent for replacement points, which if you've got if you've taken step losses, you can replace one step per unit. Um, it's one RP for an infantry unit, two for an armor unit. Uh, so this replacing those armor steps gets pretty expensive, and you can't ever do two steps on one unit. So if, if someone's taking a lot of wounds, you can only put one back on them ever at most per turn. Um, and on top of that, you'll get reinforcements each turn per the sch schedule that's uh, just off map that you can't see. So th there's this little economy. So at the beginning of your turn, you have to do those replacement steps. How many of your RPs do you want to spend before you end up having to, you know, buying into how much move and attack you can do? So, and I really like that. It was a nice little kind of seesaw that you have to balance there. 
But uh, the the units are very very simple. They're actually a little bit different from traditional hex encounters. So uh, they have three values, but the uh, three is its is its combat value. That's the number of dice that it will roll in combat. That four tells you. Uh, how many steps it has left. So this has four steps. When it gets flipped, it has three steps, and there's a there's off map, there's a, a two and one replacement counter. This guy only has two steps, goes down to one, and if this is removed, he's eliminated. And then the four is their movement point values. And again, there's a there's a terrain effects chart that which has all the movement on it. Very traditional, that that aspect of it. But you uh it's not attack and defense, for example. So to do a combat, you'd spend one RP, and let's say we've got this German unit attacking into Verstania. He's gonna roll two dice base, but he's attacking into a town, and on the on the little town chart, it says other terrain effect and plus one for defending unit. So he's got two dice, I've got three dice base, plus one for being in a town, and other terrain other terrain is the uh, is the forest, and the forest is minus one die for each attacking unit. So he goes from a two to a one. So this is a really bad attack. Really, you don't want to be making this attack, right? But that's that's how you calculate the odds in combat. What you would do is you would chuck these dice, and I, the uh, ally scored two infantry hits, and the Germans scored one armor hit. So two infantry, and, and it happens simultaneously. So the two infantry hits. They go one step, and then two is eliminated. An armor would hit an armor unit, like a tank. It does also hit infantry units. Uh, it does not work the other way around. An infantry hit does nothing to an armor unit. But an armor hit hits infantry and armor. So we would take one step loss here as well. But if you're, if you're trying to attack tanks, it's literally on this die, there's infantry, armor, and then there's four blanks. It is a one in six that you'll do anything to that tank. But that's that's combat. It is it is tough. It is brutal, especially if you're defending in good defensive points, which is the Allies. That's exactly what you want to do. Now the Germans would never make this attack. What they're going to do is they're going to roll up with maybe another armor unit and an infantry unit if they can get it together. So now what we're going to do, attacking into into a forest is minus one for each attacking unit. So now we're going to roll three dice for this tank. We're going to roll three dice for this tank, and then we're going to roll two dice for the infantry unit. So now all of a sudden, they're rolling a ton of dice. And I'm still only rolling three, which I don't have enough of, three plus one for being in a town. And if it's at the correct turn, I might be able to toss in an air unit to give me plus two dice. When you start chucking the big bones, it's still not great. The odds are still very bad on dice. So I'm going to do two hits, and then I'm going to roll... Four, three, four, five, six. And I do only the one hit, which is pretty odd. Right, so an infantry unit has to take the infantry loss, and then these two, one infantry and one armor, so this is gonna get replaced with the uh, with the two-step county. It's got a two in the middle, you see. That's combat. It's it's the dice are pretty harsh, and you need to get a lot of them to really count. On getting on getting hits in, uh, because without those, it's a total gamble. Uh, but but then you're going to move your movement point value. So you spent an RP to do a big attack. Let's say you'd cleared them out. You're then then you're going to spend RPs one per unit this time to move. He's got four movement points, so he's going to go uh, one, two, three, four. Great. He's going to move four spaces, and we moved through. Uh, we move through Bastania, so we're going to control that. So now, for the purposes of supply, if there were allied units here, they can't trace supply back uh, through here, for example. Then these armor units have six movement points. Armor units move half movement on roads. So they're going to go... Uh, yeah. So half, one, one and a half. If you move through your unit that's on a road, it's one. So it was... Half, one, one and a half, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. Oh, we can't move in there. So we've got three and a half here, because to move into an enemy zone of control costs three movement points. And we're already at three and a half, so we'd have to stay here. We can't move into here. But that's movement. 
Moving through rough terrain costs, I think, uh, three movement points for armor. It costs two movement points for infantry. Moving into forest is two movement points. Very slow going if you go off the roads. But if you stay on the roads, that's where a lot of the a lot of the defensive stuff is going to be at these at these choke points, basically, right? Historically, that was the case. They do a good job of kind of nudging you towards that kind of thing in this game as well, which I appreciate a lot. Um, there's a, a the reinforcement schedule again because this game's at most ten turns long. You get reinforcements up till turn eight for the Germans, turn seven for the Allies, but they have a lot um, that come in on turn seven. Thirty core rolls in, and uh, a significant part of seventh core uh, rolls in as well in in that turn seven. So then they've got a lot to make a big push back east as well, which is nice for you finally get to those big counter attacks, and then at the end during the end game you get like three of these plus two counters that you're dropping your air power everywhere again so you get you get nuggets of that uh, the historical flavor of what happened whilst keeping it a pretty quick game it is it is does not take long at most you're probably going to do four or five a attacks because there's just low counter density and you'll double up units on them so not every single one's making individual attacks. And then it's moving your guys, counting spaces. It's not a massively complicated game uh, as things stand. There's little, uh, there's markers you can use for if someone's moved, if they've attacked, and if they've done both and they become finished, basically, um, just to help you keep track. Because you can activate a unit for movement. So let's say, oh, we're just going to move this guy. And then I could do a whole bunch of other stuff. Then I can come back to this guy and activate him again to do an attack if there was an attack to do. You don't have to do everything with one unit before you move on to another unit. Which gives you some tactical flexibility, which I did appreciate. Um, again, it's it, little nuances like that mean that you've got some flexibility in your game. And uh, and you're not just locked into, okay, i got to do this thing. And then i got to do everything with this guy. You can do a couple of attacks over here. Then maybe do something over here, and then you're like, sweet. I can then swing these guys around and do like an exploitation type move, which I thought was really nice. The one thing about this game that kind of caught me off guard in a way is that uh, there's no retreat rules, at, at least printed in in the in the in the rules book, and so you have to, you have to eliminate people. They're not ever going to leave the space because everyone's dug in, and so as such, you've got to roll well, or you've got to make big attacks to clear people out. Or you've got to try to circumvent them, but in that case, you're going to probably put yourself out of supply at some point. But I, I really enjoy that kind of thing. It just was a very different... You're not pushing units back. You have to you have to attack, 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 and, and delete them, basically. And that was a very... It was very really interesting to play a game like that. I don't know if you've played any games where there's just no retreat rules. You have to, you have to kill them outright. Everything is the loser falls back. And in this one, just to keep it streamlined... Uh, and probably there's some balance into the number of steps that everyone has. It, you have to make a wall of defenders and just hang on whilst the reinforcements come, rather than moving back and conceding ground. You, you don't. You're not doing that in this game. That was something that I thought was very interesting. So, uh, what we'll do is here we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So, have a look at the map. Uh, yeah, it looks great. Right? Yeah, I, I think this map I, I I think is really cool. I remember back we mentioned earlier. 1940. Yes. They did not have the detail on that map that they do on this map. Yeah, this is much more, you know, you've got yeah. some different colors on it. They've right? got about 17 different style of tree here. I mean, they're, they're evergreen style of tree. Reminds no, me a little bit of Antietam. It's the same, it's yeah, the same style. Yeah, that same style. So it's there's visual uh, acuity and pleasantness to the, to the map. I, I think it's very clear. Um, the counters are very thick and they're pre rounded yeah. and they're linen finished. They're very, very nice. Uh, uh, yeah, and and frankly, the different step units were very easy to find. And you kind of stack them up here. This game, above a lot of other games, oh. yeah, that nice little insert has a custom yeah. a custom insert in it, which I've just messed up. You're yeah. welcome. But it has like so st you don't have to get an extra counter tray. It's all no, in it's the, all in there, and you and it's all like lined up. And Remind they stack me. really nicely in there, and you yeah. can put all the German units, all the American units, all the. All the, the attack counters. There's also hidden units for some of the other yeah, scenarios. There's, there's variant rules where you can put hidden counters. That you can yeah. have phantom units that are nothing yeah. as well. Intel was bad. and yes. you know Those kind of things keep this game interesting 
and and really variable, and I like that. Yeah, a couple of the dice were misstruck. Which I was surprised by, yeah. Normally they're really good about that kind of thing. Well, these are dead, I mean, these are dead on. Yeah, some of them are dead on, some of them are I grand. I think there were two. Oh, yeah, two that were a bit whack, but... Uh, but, you know, it's not It's not the end of the world. No. These dice are really cool. They're kind of, I'm not, what's that? I don't want to say, tran they are translucent. Yeah, those are translucent. So it, they just look really nice. I said earlier, they remind me of Swedish fish, and I want to eat yeah. the dice. Or Yeah, we, we joked at that, but... Well done on the production. Rules are simple, straightforward. I think they get across what they need to get across. Mm. The other concept we didn't talk much about in the first part is the the RPs. Yeah. The uh, those are your uh, what what do they call them? I wanted to say replacement. They, points, they are resource points. Resource points. So you use resource points to activate units to move. Yep. To attack, you pay one. RP per hex you're attacking into. Yes. It's not per unit. Yeah, you, it's it's the attack hex, and everyone adjacent can, yeah, attack, can attack in. That's all one RP. Uh, also, your RPs can be used to replace steps at the very beginning of the round. Mm -hmm. There are very few limitations on that. You have to be in supply, and that's basically, yeah, that's basically it. it. So I had you out of supply a couple of times where I was whittling you down. Yeah. Then you broke through, and, and I'm like, dang it, now he can replace those steps. Um but those RPs were pretty cool. It was a, it was a, I felt like I had too many as the Germans. If you want to know the honest truth, I think the I first think the Germans need it though. I think they really yeah, they do because do, things could well, and things could also go terribly badly. So the neck and that yeah. second, third, fourth, and fifth if, round, you need if to you had taken steps. a few more step losses in the beginning. Yeah. If my rolls had been anything, you, I would have needed those you would RPs. Have been, it would have been very painful. Yeah. I think. I also felt like you had six to twelve RPs, and you also didn't have. So, so what I'm saying is I felt like we almost had an overabundance. Maybe scaling that back just slightly would have made some of those decisions a little more I think, meaningful. I think that that's a dice problem, though. I think if the dice had been a bit more But are kind, your dice ever going to be yeah. different? Those are tough dice. But I think... I think you build in an extra two RPs just in case. Yeah. Because if you don't, then, you be then it's crippled. punishing. Yeah. Then it's punishing. I, I don't know. I overall all like the way that worked together. I always like that yeah. economic concept in a yeah. game. Yeah. How many do I replace? And does yeah. that leave me enough to do all the moves on attacks I, yep. I need to do? That's you, always good. And you saw me. I would have like three or four units. I could do replacements. And you have to ask yourself, okay, two, three, four, but I need six here and I need four. You know, and yeah, because you got to do all that first before yeah. you do your moves and the tanks. And that's interesting. So maybe as we would have gotten further, maybe into the campaign game, it would have become, well, because the Germans start going down to, well, the, the fewest they ever get a 16. Yeah. I felt like almost every time I had two to four left until the fifth and sixth round. Yeah, then I started... Start getting the reinforcements. You have to use have more, more to do more moves yeah. and things. Yeah. So I, I think that does it very well. Once again, I think I said it. I really like games that do that resource point. There's been several that we've played yeah. that have done that. I just think it's an interesting take on that. You can't activate everything. You can't move everything. You can't attack everybody. Yeah. You gotta you gotta manage those points. You only have so much fuel and bullets to go around. I think that's well done. And this is also one of those games where um, the allied players can be fairly passive the first half of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just playing. A rear guard action, yeah, and trying to cut supply and yeah. move my units where they're going to be the strongest, it, it, these defensive strong points that I need to hold, yeah, until I, thirty core. Arrives. I don't know if I ever initiated. I initiated one attack. I think this whole uh, game. It was I think you did here. one down here, and I think you did one here. But yeah, maybe you, two attacks. Like uh, yeah, that wasn't your goal. And so, but as such, I don't have many RPs, especially to start with. You have yeah. like six the first turn, eight. So, you know, you're on a defensive. It's supposed to be that way, but just, just understand that. Yeah. Right? I'm playing a little bit more passively, and then once I start getting all the RPs, I get a lot in the mid and the end game, and, and a lot of my reinforcements have come on, and those last three or four turns, yeah. I've got a lot of RP and a lot of strong units where you can start making that pushback. Yes. But yeah, overall, game did what it was supposed to do. Yes. It was interesting. I, I enjoyed it. This I had a review good time. is going to be longer than it takes to play this game. I agree. I, I absolutely agree with that. <laughs> so, 1944 Battle of the Bulge, or Battle of the Bulge 1944, if you look it up on Board Game Geek. And one other comment I would have about this. He is working on a Normandy game in the same system. Dan nice. Forney is. Yes. Also with Worthington. And I would play this system anytime. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a nice little system. It's, it's yes. It's, exactly. It's nice. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. easy to pick up and play. And it plays in a short period of time. Right. So it fills 
you know, it's going to scratch that little itch and, and yep. be what you need it to be. Yep, agreed. I agree. So, yes, this is from Worthington. It's on their website. I think it's 70 bucks from them. Uh, Which, you know, the, the counters are nice. The board's mounted. Great insert tray. I, I think it's a reasonable price, if not a little bit high. Yeah. But There's a lot, yeah, custom dice. It, yeah. It is what it is. But yeah. it's available. They're uh, also a smaller company. They don't do true. a 3,000 game print run. <laughs> Um, so anyway, uh, they have a lot of good games. Actually, we've played a lot of Worthington games that we've enjoyed. Yeah. And, and they, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Yeah. yeah. Two hour bulge game. This is it. So check it out. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I've been Alexander from the playersaid.com. And I'm Grant.